Hello and welcome to Droix. You may have seen a sneak peek of the GMK Tech Nookbox 5 in our recent Best Budget Mini PC video. If you haven't already, go and watch it to find out who won. If you did watch and the Nookbox 5 got you interested, then keep watching to learn more as we take a closer look at the device, run some benchmarks, then try some games and emulators to see its performance. As always, let's get started with the unboxing. Inside we have a quick start guide that is in full English and covers how to set up and use it. Underneath is the GMK Tech Nookbox 5 which we will show in more detail shortly. In the box we have a power supply. We will include the correct adapter for your country when you order from us at Droix. The GMK Tech Nookbox 5 is our smallest reviewed PC, measuring just 2.8 by 2.8 by 1.7 inches and weighing only 204 grams. On the front are the power button and two USB 3.2 ports. On the right side is a micro SD card slot for up to 128 gig cards. And on the back you can find a USB Type-C port which is used for the power, two HDMI 2 ports supporting dual monitors up to 4K 60Hz, a 3.5mm headphone port, a Giganet Ethernet port and a USB 3.2 port. The Nookbox 5 features the 11th gen Jasper Lake N5105 processor with Intel UHD graphics. It comes with 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM and the choice of either 256 or 512 gigs of SATA SSD. For wireless communications, you can find a fast Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. It comes with Windows 11 installed and ready to use. We got a highest temperature of 37 degrees centigrade and a noise level of 49 decibels. This was tested in average noise conditions with an ambient room temperature of 19 degrees. We start off the benchmarks with Passmark, which pushes the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage to their maximum to see their peak performance. As we recently completed our budget mini PC benchmarks, we can compare the scores with those. The Nookbox 5 comes out on top with 1749. It's the highest performer in our budget range of less than £250. Next, we are running PC Mark to see the performance when using the Nookbox 5 for everyday tasks. These include everything from web browsing, working with office documents, media consumption, and some light image editing. The Nookbox 5 scores 2522, again putting it just ahead of the B-Link Q59 followed up by the Minis Forum JB95. 3 d Mark tests the CPU and GPU together to see how they perform for video related tasks, such as image or video editing through to gaming. The Nookbox 5 is not a gaming mini PC, far from it with a score of just 355. You would not be able to play any AAA high-end games, but older ones and classic console emulators will be just fine, as we will see shortly. As part of our reviews, we are including Crystal Disk Mark results, as a few of our viewers have requested for it to be included in the benchmarks again. The Nookbox 5 gets a best read score of 555 and a write score of 409 megs a second. The writing score is a little lower than others in this price range, but it makes up for that in the read speed with second place in the results. Here is a summary of the benchmark results compared to the other mini PCs in the sub £250 price range. As you can see, the GMK Tech Nookbox 5 comes out very much on top with the highest scores in Passmark and PC Mark. Disk speeds are around the same levels of performance as the other devices, and Wi Fi performance is excellent thanks to the high speeds of Wi Fi 6. As mentioned, the Nookbox 5 is not a gaming mini PC, especially at this physical size, specification, and price. So we won't be doing all of our normal gaming benchmark tests, such as Forza Horizon 5, which is unplayable. Instead, we will take a look at some games which run very well. 
We have Streets of Rage 4 running at 720p on Vulcan Graphics set to Ultra. We are getting 60 frames per second with barely noticeable drops to 59. I did try lowering the settings to the lowest and it still drops to 59 so the counter is just being very accurate. The game otherwise runs perfectly and is very playable. Pinball FX3 is a great game that is regularly updated with new tables. It runs at around 40 to 60 frames per second depending on the complexity of the table. You can either let it run up to 60 or lock it to 30 frames per second to keep things running smoothly. Tunic was released just a few weeks ago and it runs at around 60 frames per second during the time I played on low settings at 720p. You may notice a few dips now and again when loading in a new level or there is a very busy scene. The emulator performance really surprised us whilst testing the Nookbox 5. It can play all of your classic 8 and 16 bit consoles without any issues. So let's take a look at the more advanced and recent systems. Sega Saturn emulation runs very well on the Nookbox 5. You may notice some dips in busy scenes in some games, but otherwise you should be running at full speed for the most part. PlayStation 1 also works great. I tried a bunch of games and did not notice any slowdown at all. All of the games were running at full speed and you can add some graphics filters to improve the visual quality. The Sega Dreamcast is next and I was happy to see all of the games I tried running at full speed. I did not have any problems with lag or having to change settings, it simply works. Games running on the Mupen 64 Plus Next emulator work very well. I tried some first and third party titles and did not have any issues with slowdown. Everything seems to work just fine. The first of our handhelds running the M GBA emulator is Contra Advance. We had no issues with the games running and all were playing at full speed. You can add some graphics filters to improve the upscaling with no drops in performance. We can't test the PlayStation Portable and PPSSPP without God of War. I'm pleased to say that it pretty much runs at 60 frames per second. There were a couple of drops to 50 or so while playing, but they were a rare occurrence and did not affect the gameplay too much. Other less demanding games work amazingly well. The dual screen handheld is up next running Desmumi on RetroArch. I tried several different games and they all ran without issues. By the way, you can swap the two screens side by side or show a single screen if you want to. Simply set up a hotkey to swap in the RetroArch settings. The 3D dual screen handheld is the last of our handhelds. We are running the excellent emulator Citra and the performance kind of depends on the game. As you can see on Sonic Generation, it lags whilst generating shader caches. The second playthrough will be smoother as the caches are already generated. Ridge Racer 3D on the other hand works far smoother and is playable on your first playthrough. So yeah, it depends on the game really. Games running on the Dolphin emulator are quite mixed. I tried some first party titles and I saw a fair number of them getting around 30 to 40 frames per second. I did however find some games that run full speed or at least very playable. Not every game will run great but I would imagine a fair number will. The PlayStation 2 and PCSX2 is where we see the Nookbox 5 reaching its limit. I tried a few games and none of them reached full speed. You can see that we are getting around 30 FPS on Outrun. You may get lucky with some basic games if you want to try those. 
The GMK Tech Nookbox 5 is perfect as a home or office work PC. It takes up minimal space and is powerful enough to easily handle your daily tasks and workload. These can include the basics such as web browsing through to media consumption up to 4K quality and working with large office documents. Whilst it's not a gaming mini PC, you can play older titles from several years ago with some degree of success. And depending on the game, you can play newer titles such as Streets of Rage 4 or Tunic, which is a great game. For emulation, the Nutbox 5 impressed me a great deal. It can easily handle all of your 8 and 16-bit classic computers and consoles. Going into newer generations such as the PlayStation 1 and Dreamcast era, you can enjoy these at mostly full speed. For the newer generation of handhelds, you can expect no major issues with the PSP and dual screen emulators. For Citra, you will have a mixed bag of what runs and doesn't, but there are quite a few very playable games. The GMK Tech Notebooks 5 is a great mini PC that packs a very impressive punch for its extremely small size. To put it in comparison, many mini PCs in the budget range are at least twice the physical size and still do not compete in terms of performance and features. If you are looking for a quality budget mini PC then look no further. You can learn more and buy the GMK Tech Nookbox 5 on our store at drawx.co.uk or drawx.net. Use the discount code NOOKBOX5 for a discount if you order one now. That wraps up our review of the GMK Tech Nookbox 5. We hope you found it useful. Please subscribe if you have not already as it really helps to grow the channel. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in our next video.